The snow fell steadily on Nathan Phillips Square. People huddled together, their breath forming clouds in the frigid air. It was January in Toronto, and the city felt gripped by a familiar chill economic uncertainty. But on this day, a different kind of energy crackled through the crowd. Weijin Tang, a man with a quiet demeanor and an audacious plan, was announcing his candidacy for mayor. His promise? To make Toronto rich again. I promise to make Toronto rich again. Tang's words were bold, even outlandish to some. Toronto, a city already renowned for its economic strength, seemed an unlikely candidate for a financial makeover. Yet Tang, a man who had built his life on defying expectations, exuded an air of quiet confidence. Toronto has untapped potential. Innovative solutions can make us a beacon of prosperity on the world stage. His voice, though soft, carried the weight of conviction. The crowd, a mix of curious onlookers and staunch supporters, listened intently. Some were drawn by Tang's unconventional background, a biologist turned financial whiz, while others were captivated by his promise of economic rejuvenation. His vision is exactly what Toronto needs right now. Tang's financial strategies could really transform our city. As Tang laid out his vision, the snow continued to fall, blanketing the city in a pristine white. It felt symbolic, a fresh start, a chance to rewrite Toronto's financial future. And at the heart of this potential transformation stood Wei Jin Tang, the unlikely candidate with an audacious plan. Wei Jin Tang's journey to the mayoral campaign stage was anything but conventional. Born and raised in China, Tang's early life was steeped in academia. He excelled in his studies, particularly in the sciences, and went on to earn a PhD in biology. His path, it seemed, was destined for the laboratory, for a life dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of the natural world. Yet fate, it seemed, had other plans. Driven by an insatiable curiosity and a desire to explore uncharted territories, Tang made a pivotal decision. He shifted his focus from the intricacies of biology to the complexities of the financial market. This was no mere whim. It was a calculated leap fueled by Tang's belief that his analytical skills could be applied to decipher the ebb and flow of the stock market. Armed with his scientific mind and an unwavering work ethic, Tang embarked on a new chapter, immersing himself in the world of finance. The transition was not without its challenges. The world of finance, with its jargon and intricate systems, was a far cry from the structured realm of academia. But Tang, unfazed, approached this new domain with the same rigor and discipline that had defined his scientific pursuits. He devoured financial news, pored over market data, and sought to understand the underlying forces that drove the market's movements. His scientific background, rather than hindering him, provided a unique lens through which to view the often chaotic world of finance. Word of Tang's investment acumen spread quickly. His ability to identify undervalued stocks and predict market trends bordered on the uncanny. He was soon managing funds for a small group of investors, his success breeding more success. As his reputation grew, so too did the funds he managed. What began as a modest venture rapidly blossomed into a financial empire. Tang's investment strategy was as unconventional as his background. He eschewed traditional investment wisdom, relying instead on his own meticulous research and analysis. He had an uncanny ability to see value where others saw only risk. This approach, while initially met with skepticism, yielded impressive returns, further cementing Tang's status as a financial guru. His investors, a mix of individuals and institutions, reaped the rewards of his unconventional approach. Tang's success was not solely due to his analytical prowess. He possessed an innate understanding of human behavior, a trait often overlooked in the world of finance. He recognized that markets were driven not just by numbers, but by emotions, by fear and greed. This insight allowed him to anticipate market swings and capitalize on the often irrational behavior of other investors. His ability to blend quantitative analysis with this intuitive understanding of human psychology set him apart in the world of finance. The global financial crisis of 2008 sent shockwaves through the financial world. Markets tumbled, fortunes vanished, and even the most seasoned investors grappled with the fallout. Wei Jin Tang, despite his stellar track record, 
was not immune to the crisis's impact. His funds suffered losses and his investment strategies, once hailed as revolutionary, were now subject to scrutiny and criticism. It was during this tumultuous period that Tang faced his most formidable challenge yet legal action. Investors reeling from their losses filed lawsuits alleging that Tang had misrepresented his investment strategies. The accusations were serious, threatening to tarnish his reputation and dismantle the financial empire he had meticulously built. Tang, however, remained resolute, maintaining his innocence and vowing to clear his name. Can Tang really govern after all his legal troubles? His promises sound good, but can he deliver? The legal battles were protracted and grueling, demanding Tang's unwavering attention and resources. Yet, even as he fought to defend his name in court, he never lost sight of his commitment to his investors. He worked tirelessly to recoup losses, seeking to navigate the turbulent financial waters and salvage what he could from the wreckage of the crisis. His resilience, his unwavering belief in his own abilities and his dedication to his investors shone through during this challenging chapter.